This is Anime Archaeology Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We tell you about it and explain the terms and tropes behind this unique medium. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to the broadcast, and today we're looking at episode two of the original Mobile Suit Gundam. Now, a few things to note about this. First off, if you haven't watched episode one, you should probably get on that. Secondly, the copy I have of original Gundam is from the original North American DVD release of Mobile Suit Gundam. There's actually no Japanese dub on that one. And all the episodes are back to back. So the timestamp you'll see on this <laughs> doesn't start at zero. <coughs> so the timestamp you see on these doesn't start at zero. It starts with the previous episode. So it starts like basically like 24 minutes in uh, on the timestamp. So apologies for that. Uh, you just have to kind of adjust your viewing from there. Not much I can do about it. And uh, so apologies there. Also, we had to record this particular episode in the sunroom at the broadcast tower. So it'll be a slightly different view than what you're seeing here. A very different view of what you're seeing there, actually. Uh, so just FYI. Uh, but yes, we'll be doing that. And it's actually me and Steve physically together. Uh, he was able to come down here and uh, hang out with me here for a little while. So that was cool. But uh, yeah, so that is what you should expect to see here in Gundam Episode 2. Let's get into it. Uh, okay, so here we are with Episode 2 of Mobile Suit Gundam 1979 version, Destroy Gundam. Uh, it is interesting that we're starting right off, like literally, we, I think it's the last shot. Yeah, it is. Of the yeah. previous episode, we're cutting in here and then seeing the reaction to that. Wow. Yeah. Also, I appreciate this is upside down. Yes. Um, it's space, so there's no orientation. So we just, yes, this is the... It's like Ender's game. Up is down, down is up. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Okay, this is something I always liked when I first watched this. Okay. That there's an explosion, they're losing pressure, and this guy goes, flips this switch, and it creates this, or it releases this gel that then goes out to plug the hole. Nice. Like, this always felt like such a smart thing to think about. Yeah. On a warship, you're going to have this happen all the time. All the time, right. So, yes, have some kind of, like, a blade of gel that can plug holes. All right, so, yep, there right, was right. Seen a couple of the kids are, are there now. Oh, wow, yeah, so this is this is all the kids. All three of the kids. All the kids, yeah. Are uh, being introduced right here. That's cool. It should be pointed out what just happened. That we'll go backwards a little bit. Um, there's this explosion. Frau's about to be hit. Amaro saves her, which is, again, repeating what happened in episode one right, yeah. of, like, he's kind of there for her, she's caring for him, yeah, yeah. nice kind of back and forth. So let's talk about this for a minute. Um, I do love the pacing of this sequence, where you've got the captain arm, uh, manning a, a, a gun, Ryu comes in, of course, but now we know it's Ryu, yeah. <laughs> um, comes in to, like, relieve him. And then there's just there's a random shot that hits them and injures the captain. Yeah. And just out of nowhere, just boom, it's it, there's no and like there's no melodrama to it. It's just right. oh, boom, and suddenly there's shards in my 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 uh, chest. Randomness of war. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, again, they're they're making clear here that this guy comes back. He's like that really went poorly, and Char says you did the right thing. Yep. I'm fine. You, you can't be faulted. You're yeah. good. Yeah. It's like what a what a good commander. Okay. That's I think that's the first time we see. Yeah, I think this is this the, is first, uh, the first time we see Sela. Yeah. <laughs> now, is is Sela or is that Sela? Yeah, that's Sela. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So I do love this moment where like she <clears throat> knows conceptually. Right. She's going in for injuries and so forth. And then she sees this. Yeah. Um and it's it's again, great storytelling where there's no line of dialogue. It's just she sees that she's shocked, and she goes and does the thing, so you know how bad it is for the captain. Yeah. Captain, what's wrong? 
<laughs> What's wrong? I'm sorry. I, I got things sticking out of my <laughs> chest, Bright. Yeah. And in fairness, I guess the captain did, like, run off somewhere. Uh, right. And Bright has no idea, but still, it just does seem... And, again, I think it, it is kind of... Um, giving you a, a sense of Bright's personality. That he's right. like, okay, let's. why aren't you doing the thing? Oh. <laughs> oh. Why are you laying down? Why are these... Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about kind of the, the writing side of this in terms of, like, structuring the series. Right. What they just explained is all the soldiers are dead. There are ten personnel left who can actually, like... Do whatever it is <laughs> that they know how to do. Exactly. Um, and that's why you're plucky group of teenagers are on now yes the heroes mm -hmm. yeah it's 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 effective here she is Miss, yeah. here's Mirai for the first time also interesting here let's look let's think about how we've seen the introduction of these characters like Sela we see from below right and we're literally looking up at Sela <laughs> so yeah. there's there's this sense of um command command and, and nobility and yeah, right. yeah yeah exactly uh, to her um, this is almost like a visual novel shot, right? Of a like a main character that you're you're seeing for the first time, perfectly centered. Um, she's standing up straight. She's clearly self confident. You know, she's helping tend to the wounded, but she has this this sense of being competent. Exactly yeah. competent. That's the, exactly the word. Dozel. Oh, dozel. dozel. I feel bad for the voice actor because he clearly does not know. Dozel's, Dozel's like yeah. personality and so forth. He's just playing him like some random general. Um, but you see in the writing here, Dozel's reaction immediately is, you know, we had this party, you didn't show up. What the heck? Yeah. You know, <laughs> Char's on patrol. Like, like right, yeah. things could have happened. But he's like annoyed by that. But as soon as Char says, actually, we found a thing. He's like, great job. Okay, there you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Turns well, I'll, I'll drink all the champagne that we had in your honor <laughs> to further your honor. So I'm going to drink some more champagne. So, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. I think Dozel can handle his liquor. I would say so, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so here's what I want to say about, about mm -hmm. Dozel. When, when you watch this series, you're going to come to appreciate Dozel yeah. uh, for a lot of things. And this is the first thing that we appreciate Dozel for. Mm -hmm. He has that swiftness of going going from, hey, yeah, you a little punk, to going, oh, you're a uh, great job, to immediately understanding that once it has been conveyed clearly to him, I need help, I need these mm -hmm. things, he's instantly evaluating, going, okay, this is one of my best commanders, he lost mm -hmm. three Zakus, mm -hmm. something, uh, he just found, found something important. He, the decision was very easy for Dozel yeah. to make to say, yes, of course, you will get the things. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have priority. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that line. Um, you need supplies then. Done. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's also interesting to note how they're establishing the power of Zaku's. Right. Um, where, because this yeah. is our first time seeing mobile suits and so forth, like we don't exactly know, and folks have kind of been hyping them up, but to have a discussion between high command to say, wait, we lost two Zakus? Right. That's a, a big deal. Yeah, yeah. So, again, more of Char's bias for action. Yeah. Uh, the <clears throat> fact that this, you, you know, what, what has he done here? The battle's over. He goes, immediately says, I need more supplies. I'm going to arrange that, organize that. Then next thing he does, immediately is turn and say, now we're going to go on a scouting mission. Just immediately. Uh, and they're like, wait, what? And he's like, no, that's smart. <laughs> yes, yeah. We need to know things. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's a techno freak. Thanks, Mirai. Th thanks. Although, again, it's one of those things where that is what adults would probably say. say right, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's a great shot. shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you think about all the different things they had to think through for that shot. Right. Where you have Amro in the foreground to establish where we are, the video panel in the in the top to actually, nah, um, Video panel at the top, so you can see. Oh, okay, right. the, the, the conversation, and then to have the the background show up as they're moving up. There's yeah. a, there's a lot there. That's cool. Speaking of, same thing here. Yeah. You know, we've got the mobile suits going left, uh, right to left in the background. Characters left to right in the foreground, kind of establishing yeah. all the things going on, and then that interesting like yellow glow in the background. I'm just realizing yeah. where like there's a certain. Like there's an effect they put over the top of that. 
to indicate um, like a force field or something. Interesting. Or a barrier of some type. Yeah, some kind of barrier. Oh, you know what it is? Mm. I'm willing to bet it's to show that they're that the scale because they're probably higher up on a bay, oh. and because uh, you don't see quite all the entire of the track of the gun, mm. of the gun tank or mm-hmm. the foot of the, of the Gundam. True. So wow. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And then, and then having. Are, can you imagine if they're pulling cells at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, work money money's what money's were spent yeah exactly all right so we got to say what a perfect introduction for kai yes <laughs> like like i have expected him to say but i was gonna go to town to get some power converters <laughs> uh the fact that he just like dashes in from the side yeah, like, just, oh good <laughs> Man. i just might live what yet mm. yeah yeah mm-hmm yeah <laughs> slot number two <laughs> I, I do have to, to note, um, I think, I think we mentioned this before, um, somebody made a mistake and forgot that sailors w- w- should be wearing a shirt. Because uh, yeah. um, they just, like, colored in the blue uh, there yeah. below her <laughs> instead of actually drawing a shirt. So, oops. The little, little animation mistakes. Also, wasn't... Um, weren't they in front of that soldier before? I like, w- so. why is... Why Frown and behind. Guy? I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's, it's still strong composition. Right. But it's kind of interesting. Okay, so actually this answers the question we had before, which okay. was that we saw Amaro in the, uh, the, driving the Jeep, and we were wondering, like, how, how much is he actually driving? But, like, here, like, Frau is jumping in. And it was, and it was, so yeah. clearly they're, they're pretty self-directed. Like, that's not a, a highway Right. That yeah. it would just know how to drive on. So, yeah, 15 year olds can just drive anything now. It's great. Okay, like, I just I just processed this. They just opened fire on a colony. Yeah. Like, that's a, like, that's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> like, had they done that prior? I, well, you know, it's at this point in the war, they've lost half of their mm, respective population. So, yeah. it would not. You know, if you were a Federation ship going after sides and you were battling outside mm. of the side, you, you're going to hit the sides. Yeah, yeah, so that's true. So sides might be fair game. Yeah. I mean, Earth is for the, yeah. for, for the Zeons. Yeah, so. Sam, you're right. <laughs> also, I just got to call out, like, good job adding the shadows. Yes. I think they had to really think through that. And you can't see this, but, like, the background is actually rotating. And so they made sure everything was in the right spot for that. It's interesting here how I think Bright is so unsure of himself. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he, he's got this whiplash between Amaro suddenly being in the Gundam, the captain being like, well, we got, we got to mm-hmm. use him. Yeah. It, suddenly Bright is, you know, is like, okay, Amaro, what do you think we should do? Yeah. It's very uncharacteristic for his personality, but I think it, it is because this is such, he, he doesn't deal too well with, like, this kind of ambiguity. Well, you know, point. he's 19. He's yeah. just can't come out of probably officer candidate school, mm-hmm. which means that um, he's probably got, like, this stuff. Like, his his back is probably nothing but, like, metal because <laughs> he can't bend because that's what he's been trained to do. Mm-hmm. So he's sitting there, and he's recognizing that the captain is just like, well, don't have a choice. We've had child soldiers before, and Bright's probably going, ah, he's talking about me. And, you know, <laughs> True. And, and so he's just like, okay, well, we, you know, we just got to deal with the situation here. So this is, I think, the first moment that Bright actually acts on his own initiative and, mm-hmm. and is just like, going, well, I don't know what to do. The captain seems to think that this is a good idea mm-hmm. or, you know, the only idea that yeah. we have. So, all right, Mr. Gundam Pilot, since you're doing the thing, mm-hmm. uh, what what is it that, that you think we should be doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it is slightly odd. Like, I'm surprised that they added that moment for Bright here, given what they that they're trying to establish that he's very much, as, as you point out, you know, straight. Yeah. <laughs> and that um, it, it would be easy for them to not include that. And I wonder if they're kind of trying yeah. to soften him a little bit to show that there is that side to him still. Like, what is Tomino trying to tell us here? Right. Yeah. You know. You know. Here. You know. Like. All this massive upheaval and all this stuff, and of course, you know you can't bring your pets with you. You know mm-hmm. that kind of a thing, obviously. But I, that doesn't seem like the message. The message here is that I'm trying to figure that out. Where the dog is, 
rooting through the trash, mm. trying to eat. There's nobody. Is this him trying to say there is nobody left on the side? I think to an extent. Um, I think there's also a certain amount of melancholy to the fact that you know, even with everybody gone, life goes on in a yeah. sense, and there are all yeah. these kind of creatures that are going to kind of do whatever they do. Oh, yeah. Um, whether they survive or not, like let's be honest. Or maybe that's what that's the analogy Tolman mm. was trying to say is that <clears throat> we're justifying putting Amaro in a position to kill other people at the age yeah. of 15 mm-hmm. and having putting Bright in a position who's 19, barely yeah. an adult, mm-hmm. in a position of having to make what's going to eventually be really crappy orders <laughs> and that he's going to have to carry out. Mm-hmm. And and just, but, you know, this is, you know, a justification because the dog mm-hmm. is not going to get fed on its own and he's going to yeah. have to fend for himself. So maybe this is... Oh yeah, uh, you know an analogy between you know what's going on on white base and you know the side that's just going. Hey, if you want to live, you got to do some stuff. Yeah, no, <laughs> you I, know, I I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. That that is, that that makes a lot of sense as the message that you know, um, you got to do what you got to do. That's cool. And this lovely moment, and it's making me a little verklempt here. Uh, where you see kind of the shadow of Frau going about her day. And yeah. this was today, to be clear. Right. These memories are like of this morning. Yes. <laughs> like, like a couple hours ago, maybe, where she's leaving her house, going over to Amaro's. Um, like, how much has changed? And it should be pointed out, what does Frau do? Tears come to her eyes. She wipes them off and continues broadcasting. Right. Like, the, the strength of this young lady. Oh, right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, this yeah, this yeah, is yeah. that moment. Yeah. Um, and we see her go for the gun. I'm assuming that because we see Char rooting around in mobile suit components, that she realizes that's not a survivor. Yeah. Um, even though he has a normal suit on, and she couldn't necessarily know he's Zeon, although she might be able to tell, like from from a distance. Um, right. Like no survivor would be, you know, taking pictures. <laughs> right. Hey, look at this. Yeah. Right. Look like great! Look great! Look great on my Facebook account. <laughs> Gotta die. Here's what I think is interesting about this. Yeah. Is that you know we have Shar, we know about the mask and all mm-hmm. this stuff, and in episode two we actually see his face. Yeah, that's true. Right? You're you know, absolutely we actually, right. We we actually know, and this is really, if you haven't watched it, you'll understand why this becomes important <laughs> later on. But this is, um, but this is like. You know, like when I first saw this, I'm like, "Oh, wait, he does the face reveal on episode yeah. two. Uh-huh. and it's just kind of like, "Oh, wait, why? Why are we doing this?" So this is obviously what we know why, mm-hmm. but yeah. this is obviously important. Yeah. Well, and and again, kind of connecting the dots here, you realize that because he he figures out who she is immediately. Yeah. yeah. And then she's like, "Take off your helmet." He is doing this not to reveal himself to her. Although he knows he's going to do that. He's doing this. So that she will be surprised, so that he can disarm her. Yes. Right. This is purely a psychological move on his part uh, to to gain the upper hand, which is char. Char. That's, <laughs> That's what he does, <laughs> and he does it well. He does. Can you imagine that? Like you're flying away, and someone's aiming a, a beam can <laughs> the size of a two-story building at you. There will be not literally nothing yeah. left if yeah. you get hit. I also like what they establish here, which I think they 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 we see a bit more of later, that how fast humans can be compared to mobile suit weapons. Yeah. That the scale actually changes the way the war happens. Uh, and so humans can actually kind of scurry around and, and do things when mobile suits are doing their thing as long as they're not like super destructive. And also another thing is to note <clears throat> how at this point Amaro goes, he's shocked to see an actual Xeon soldier. Right, yeah. Like, so when he was fighting before, oh, he's, yeah. he's only looking at these things as mobile suits. He's You're not, right. he's, and so when we were talking about how he was like, you know, basically mm-hmm. just shoving a, a thing right into the cockpit, yeah. he's probably not thinking, I'm killing the pilot. He's You're probably right. thinking, I'm just stopping it, and mm-hmm. this is the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. He's seeing an actual human being, an actual yeah. soldier, which is a whole other thing. A yeah. whole other thing. So this, and he's shocked by it because he's just like, going, uh, do I kill this guy? Yes, yes, you're supposed to. <laughs> but you know, it's a lot easier to mm-hmm. to kill a to like destroy a thing than it is yeah. to to kill a person. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and it should be pointed out, like, and this could just be animation, but yeah, he pulls it out, like he gets it ready, and then Char leaves. So it's not like he's even targeting Char. Like right. he's, he's even getting that shot of being able to pull the trigger. 
He's just, oh, right, I, you know, let me see if I can hit him. Yeah. And again, this is interesting to have a reveal this quickly. Yeah. That's, that's, that, so Char is just, say, just saying, who is she, could she be, this yeah. person? And she's like, that's my brother. Yeah, I think. And that's, like, when you're on the second episode after having gone through that slog of the first episode of everyone, di- everyone dying and everything, this becomes so important. You're like, wait, there's a brother and sister involved? Wait, what, what, what's going on here? Wait, wait a second. Do you and, just... and realizing that one's on one side and the other's on the other you're side. You're right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if... I think that really focuses in on that idea that these are all just people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay, I just got to say how clever they make Char here. Yeah. Where we've gotten all of this sort of melodrama going on of, okay, brother, whatever, you know, they're leaving. Door opens. Char's like, I'm still here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and yeah. there's a way for me to get to, get yeah. to White Base. I'm going to take advantage of it. Like, yeah. in so many other stories, they would kind of forget that he was still around. But no, he has an agenda. He's going he's gonna to pursue it. Also, we pointed out, to your point, um, an enemy soldier infiltrates a base. Brights goes, yeah, what, do do? what do we do? You know, it's like, didn't you go through training for this? <laughs> <laughs> Something. <laughs> you know what's actually interesting about Bright at this point in the series? Bright, on his own initiative, panics. Yeah. But when the captain says ABC, he's just like, click. Absolutely. Everything, everything clicks in and he goes, Okay, orders, got mm-hmm. it, do yep. it. I know how to do this part. Yep, you're yeah. absolutely right. And I think that also gives us indication for where he's going to grow as a character because like, famously he's, he's somebody where, um, especially as time goes on, once he has at least a direction to go in, he yeah. can execute that really well. Yeah. Um, he's not a people person. No. <laughs> but he like, understands uh, you know, the strategy and all that kind of stuff and can kind of pull everything together. Um, he's just not there yet. I think this is the second time we've seen Hayato. Yeah. Again, appreciate pulling him back in because he's going to be a significant character mm-hmm. moving forward. Yeah. And so just finding ways throughout this. And again, this is hard writing. Yeah. To be able to weave all these characters in, make sure we're remembering them. Because your first watch through of this, you don't even recognize who Hayato is until like episode five or six, right? right. Once he's like really piloting. I mean, maybe earlier than that. But the fact that they can weave all these characters in is just really clever. So I think this is interesting because they could easily have had him return with the information. Right. And that would have sort of changed the story a little bit. But I think it was smart of them to say he gets back with nothing. Uh, And so, and the point here in the story is because the information is destroyed, he's like, okay, this is going poorly. You know, it's time for me to go. Right, yeah. And you'll also notice the speed at which this happens. Mm-hmm. Char flies in. He's doing his best. He's looking around, t- taking care-, care of stuff. You know, Bright pops up. Um, Char immediately reverses course, and, like, he's out. Yeah. So, like, he, he's not overstaying his welcome. Also interesting in this shot, as he's leaving, you notice what Char says. The enemy's right behind me. Yeah. Not... Follow me, provide cover, whatever. He trusts and knows what his men are going to do. do. Contrast right. that with White Base. Right. Right. Everyone's scrambling the entire he, time. These are veteran soldiers, and they're like, he just, he actually did give an order right then and there. Yeah. They just understood what it meant. <laughs> exactly. <Right. laughs> and, and, and the other part of this is, is that I like the feel. One of the things that sets Gundam apart from so many other things mm. and this is what makes it a war story Yeah, is the fact that you have this scene where it's the, the, the command is understood in, in such brevity mm-hmm. and that these are not oh my henchmen cover me <laughs> while I go away and you I will sacrifice your lives in the greater glory of blah 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 <laughs> no the, you know he's he's being an appropriate commander things happening this is the thing here's the order of God we know what to do go yep you know exactly yeah it's a war story it's not not you know Dr. Claw or, you know, <laughs> Inspector Gadget. I'll get you next time. <laughs> also just really cool art here of seeing the reflection of yeah. that. Because this is not like, you're not seeing him in the eye. Like you're, you're seeing kind of the targeting reticule, um, reticle and, and Char kind of superimposed, right? Yeah. This is 
an artistic choice, um, but it really gets across like what what Amaro is struggling with right now. Yeah. And getting back to that point where his men start to panic, and he goes, "Stay cool. Here's what's happening. Here's the situation." Too, yeah. It's and, and it's it's both calming them, but also giving them information so that they will calm down. Yes. Um, so it's it's you know. And again, to your point, a lot of these would be, you know, relax, soldier. Yeah. Or it would be, I am calculating, understanding all this stuff. It's like, no, I'm, I'm going to both help you emotionally, but also help you intellectually. Right. It's it's one of those things where, you know, again, we're seeing what, what, what it's like to be a veteran versus, mm-hmm. you know, just a kid in a mobile suit. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of interesting how they use the heartbeat and, you know, yeah. just like all the sounds kind of dumbed down to here's this heartbeat and just... Amaro just kind of breathing heavily and, mm. and watching the eye just move up and down a little bit just because yeah. kind of, he's processing this is a person. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he's he's not yelling. He's doing, when he's yelling, I'm going to fire, he's, he's saying it to two people. He's saying mm. it to them in the irrational hope that they'll just go, <laughs> fine, we surrender or <laughs> we get out of the way. Right. right. Yep. And the other part of it is saying it to himself and going, no, you got, you got to, you got to do this. And what does he do? He closes his eyes and just yeah. starts doing the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he's 15. Yeah. <laughs> what do you expect? Exactly. You know? Well, and also like that is a very common thing. Um, so one thing that a lot of folks don't know is that traditionally in warfare, a very small number of like ranged fire actually hits the enemy. Right. Because folks are just, they don't really want to hit anybody. So they're kind of firing in the general direction. Yeah. But they're not targeting because it is very difficult to make people actually try to kill somebody. Yeah. So that kind of wildfire hoping that it'll kind of do something. Yeah. Common. Something I just thought of, and I wonder if they actually address. If you're out in space and Izaku is coming towards you, you have to get into it. How the heck do you do that? I think that's what they were talking about, the laser line. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So the laser mm-hmm. line. Because, you know, when we see see them have that weird little laser line that comes yeah. out when the gun comes mm-hmm. I think that I think that's what they're yeah. referring to. Um, and it must have some kind of, like, automatic slowdown. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Thing. Yeah. Because otherwise well, it'd be I like, hope so. here it comes. <laughs> Uh-oh. You <know>? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Bugs Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Exactly. I love the... A performance from Mirai's voice actor here, where in the English dub, where there's this uncertainty mm-hmm. to her voice, where she's like, "Okay, I'm doing the thing, uh, you know, I'm I'm doing what I need to, but I'm I'm not super confident at the moment." <laughs> right. <laughs> Bright doing the thing. Yeah, it, it's interesting to note like how quickly he is taking charge. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So Hayato is being told how to use the thing. He catches on almost immediately. I think this is our first hint of new types. Oh, okay. Wow. Because Hi- of that. Yeah. yeah, because like, there's no reason for Hayato to know anything about how all this works. And he's like, yep, 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 got it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> I do love this little bit of humor here where we see all the different cameras from around White Base. And one of them is the, uh, the kids arguing, you know. <laughs> That is, that is just kind of cute. Um, but it also does, like, we should point out, um, two of these images show people on the ground in, like, blankets. One shows, an, um, two shows an injured person um, directing, like, a kid or something, yeah. else, clearly a civilian, and then, of course, the little kids are arguing. Dire Straits. It should also be pointed out, this is a somewhat technically challenging pull cell. Yeah, because of the angle you're trying to move it at to also align up with those uh, the laser lines. Right. Like you have to be a little careful there. That was Skippy the intern's job. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I can totally screw it up. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> gotta point out the shade that yeah. <laughs> Bright is throwing here, where Ryu goes, "I'm a pilot cadet, well, better than some people." You know? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, wow. I also have to point out, <laughs> he's like, experience, two simulations, <laughs> sir. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> he's so proud of himself, and Mike's like, uh, here we go. Yep. Yep. The legend of Shaw. Mm-hmm. One's approaching three times normal speed. Yep. 
And uh, and again, what a what a an interesting way of getting across because up until this point, like they have no idea, right? Um, they seen a red uh, a normal suit. That's all they know. But now they know who Shar is, and that clues the audience in to okay, this is a big deal. This is interesting. Mm-hmm. It, it, again, what is this? I don't know. Like, Bright's trying to figure out what's going on. We get this sudden red everywhere as he's trying to understand what's going on. And it's centered on Bright. I'm not sure. Um, is it like New Type Powers Awakening? I think it's just the fact that he's beginning to understand. Yeah, maybe. Huh. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Exposition. <laughs> and it's just an alarm. Yeah. But it's just red lights going on. Fair enough. Although, it should be pointed out. One second. Okay, so here's, here's my argument. Um, I think, yes, there's a red alarm going off, and so everything's going red, right? It's literally red coloring on the ship. But it is still centered on bright. Yeah. I think this is both a an artistic choice to center the eye and focus in on this is about kind of Bright's moment. But also I think that you could argue that there is a bit of realization from Bright about what's going on and maybe maybe some new new type powers starting to kind of inch in. And what confidence from Shar here? Well, I've already taken out five battleships at the Battle of Loom. You know, mm-hmm. on a relatively successful mission, didn't get my butt handed to me. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go in. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. And remember, like this is our first time seeing him in a mobile suit. Mm-hmm. And we've already seen how good he is on the ground. Whew. There we go. There we go. Yeah, keep thinking about the humans. So here's where Char starts to realize some limitations. Yeah. Where he's like, okay, I, I hit him. Great. He's not got. He's not dead yet. What's going on? Yeah. Um. And I. And again, good writing. Where he's heard what his subordinates have said about how dangerous these is, these are. But once he's in combat, his instincts take over. Right. And you think, okay, got him down. And that's like not fully connecting for him in the brain until he actually sees it. He may know it intellectually, but it's interesting here how much Amaro is freaking out. Yeah. Where he isn't. He doesn't do that in episode one, I think partly because just the adrenaline is kicking in, and he's just you know, doing the thing. He's just, yeah. you know, surviving and taking care of things. Now that this is a situation, obviously there's a lot going on, but he's he has some time to kind of process and see what's going on. He was out shooting at Char. That didn't work. The, the mobile suits are coming in. So now he's, like, seeing this at a, a larger scale. And it's he can't process it. Right. I mean, you know, when you're inside of a you know battle zone, and you're 15 years old, and mm-hmm. you're piloting this thing. It was like a video game beforehand to take out these big machines, yep. and now he's actually dealing with somebody who really knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just like it's just like it's like playing a video game for the first time at level one. You're you're cleaning house, and mm-hmm. then you hit level two, and you're just like, why am I getting my butt handed to me? <laughs> I think it's where, that's where Amaro is right now. Yeah. He's just like, like, he's realizing that these are people, these are yep. things, he's having trouble doing that. I can do the thing. No, actually, you can't. And, you know, he's just, it just everything's just like, eh. It should also be pointed out a little bit earlier, he has th- that first experience of where he shoots at a mobile suit and it dodges. Yeah. Like, before, he might not hit because mm-hmm. of whatever reasons, but the other pilot is better than you, mm-hmm. objectively. That's what's freaking him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or the really, really, really first moment of, I'm going to die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, yep. <laughs> Most importantly, while I'm upside down, mm-hmm. you should know. Yeah. Um, and again, getting back to Char's command of his people. Yes. Um, you know, stop freaking out. It's okay. He, you know, his shots are going wild. We'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, we won't, but... <laughs> now, remember... That's that, that was Amuro's special trick before. Right. Was this, you know, hand-to-hand combat, which does surprise Char. What's different now? <coughs> You're going against Char. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Down he goes. Um, this might be the first use of this shot, I think. Um, yeah. Which becomes, you know, an iconic 
moment in Gundam. They reuse the animation a few times. Um, but just got to speak to the moment of... And again, they're, they're, the movements are actually humans, really, basically. And so just that, that slow, backwards movement as it's being shot... And, and you should be having Ave Maria playing in the background and <laughs> someone screaming, no. Exactly. And Shara is shook yeah. for a couple of reasons. One is that, you know, <laughs> uh, one shot from the beam rifle takes out a, a Zaku straight up. And it should also point out, remember, um, what was going on in the, in, um, uh, in, on side seven was Amaro choosing to try to be careful as to how he took these out. Um, so, I think this, this is a, a big moment for Shar, but also, you, you, you'll note, every other member of his commando team is now dead. Yeah. Um, in, again, like an hour. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. The first time we actually see Shar act irrationally. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's just so surprised. He can't even process it, really. Um, also, we pointed out this is weaving in and setting up something else. Uh, Bright mentions earlier to Amaro, make sure you don't run out of energy. Yeah. And Amaro goes, I'm fine. What Char is pointing out here is for this to, it to have this much energy, how can it possibly do that? The implication being it must have a, a battery with massive like output, but a short life. Yeah. So yes, Amaro can fire all this stuff, but after, you know, a short number of shots, he's done. Yeah. Which Amaro is not realizing that that is the limitation of the Gundam. And, and, and Amaro being the 15-year-old boy, he's like, yeah, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, oh. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah, exactly. But can you imagine, like, how, like, if this was World War II, which is, you know, there's a lot of parallels here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, like, the Zero Fighters and, like, mm -hmm. just, you know, going up finally after, you know, winning, winning, winning. And then coming up against this like clunky old thunderbolt, and mm. it starts shooting your friends down. And you're just like, <laughs> "How are you? Why? Yep. Why is this happening?" Mm -hmm. So you know, it, so they've enjoyed a superiority in this mm. war with the Zaku's for so long because, yeah. as what a lot of people don't might not understand with Gundam mm. as they're first watching, is that the Federation doesn't have mobile suits. They don't right. have these things. They have core fighters, or they have the, the gun tanks. They have. Mm -hmm. um, um, they have Mecha, but it's not on the order of the Zaku. Well, and interestingly, in, in original Gundam, um, this is something they've kind of retconned since. Original Gundam, all they have so far are balls. Yes. Uh, in the Federation. Right. Um, everything you see in Operation V is completely new technology. What they've since brought in is, like, they have, like, gun tanks and other stuff. Well, yeah. But nothing, like, really very effective. Right. Um, I think they said in, in Gundam The Origin that, like, one gun tank is worth, like, three or four Zakus. Yeah. Right. right. Or, 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 uh, uh, vice versa. Um, like yeah. One Zaku can take out like three or four gun tanks. Right, yeah. Um, because it, it did seem a little weird. <laughs> Suddenly yeah. we've, been, we've been under all the things. Um, but yeah, to yeah. your point, the Zaku is the vastly superior weapon. Yeah. The fact that Char can take out five battleships in, you know, once. Right. Yeah. <sighs> Interesting moment here for Char. All the self-confidence up to this point. And yeah. earned. Right, right. yeah. Um... Then he encounters this thing that is just so overwhelmingly powerful. And on the one hand, he is having a difficult time processing that. But also, that's reasonable. Right. And then what does he do? He does not throw himself into the fray. He does not come up with some tactics. He's like, I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah. I, I, I cannot handle, I can't, I cannot, uh, you know, correctly, I cannot handle this. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, I, this thing is going to wipe out me and the Musai. I got to go and we'll figure it out later. Right. Yeah. Smart. Interesting moment here, where Amaro has just uh, come onto the, uh, onto the bridge. Frau has this again. She's the sensitivity to other people. Again, most other anime series, she'd run over to Amaro. Right? Oh, I'm glad you're safe. Yeah. She reads the room and realizes. Mm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I can't quite do the thing. Yeah. So she's like, I'm glad you're safe. Uh, I'll, I'll be over here. <laughs> now, to your point. I'm, a, I'm sorry, Bright's probably just come out of officer training uh, 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 school. This is what you do. Yeah. You know, somebody did poorly, you tell them what to do better next time. Right. And they go out. Like, he is, he is following exactly what was done to him, I'm sure, for yes. months. 
and is how you train soldiers. Not what Amro is. Yeah, <laughs> um, so, and again, I, I think this is part of Tomino talking about you know what war does to people, um, right. and how soldiers become almost different people than a normal person, yeah. so, so to speak. Um, nothing against soldiers, to be clear, right. but that it, it it requires a completely different mindset. Well, you know, when you're you under normal circumstances, when you go through basic, part of basic is, mm. is breaking you down, you yeah. down out of what you were. Yeah. And the Mercury Corps does it in a very brutal fashion. Mm. But and then <clears throat> they rebuild you back up. Yeah. And that's what Bright's doing here. But mm-hmm. the, the the problem, of course, that we we all know is that. Yes, Bright is doing the correct thing to the wrong person. Exactly. Because <laughs> Amaro <laughs> is not a soldier. Amaro's thinking, I did pretty well. Yeah. I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> and you're alive. I have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And from Bright's perspective, like, what, he, what he's basically telling Amaro is, I trust you so much. Right. That I'm going to let you pilot this... You know, very important piece of technology. Again, from a soldier's perspective, this, oh, yeah, I, this I get to do this. That's amazing. Anything. Yeah, right. You don't. So many people have to earn that right, and he mm-hmm. says, and Bryce is like, I got nothing but you. So, <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I'm gonna have to roll with this. You, but and he's expecting Amaro to roll with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, know. You, know, you know, I think his expectation is Amaro to go. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, and it's mm. because because honestly, if Shar were to do that with a with a actual soldier, the yeah. soldier, that's what the Zion soldier would do. Exactly. It, on the one hand, the other soldier is like, ah, oh, crap, I got to do better. But <laughs> at least he's thanking me for you know mm-hmm. trusting me to do the thing. Yeah. And Amros is like, hey, I don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> Federation ship, which means you were. And let's point out the visual storytelling here. What are the reactions from everyone else in this shot? Right. Compared to Bright. Bright's ramrod straight, you know. Um, uh, Frau has this, what are you doing like expression. Um, and, and Kai is just like, yeah, I've seen this before. <laughs> been there, done that. Have fun with this kid. Now, there is an argument that Bright is doing what Amaro's father should have done. Mm hmm. That Amaro was left to his own devices for you know, years, basically. Mm-hmm. And that Bright basically says, you need structure. I'm going to order you to maintain the Gundam, learn all, all that all kind of stuff. Yeah. And that in a real way, this is exactly what Amaro needs. Yes. He just doesn't know it yet. And obviously the situation is less than ideal. Yes. <laughs> I thinking in the back of his head, you know, the old power converters. I wish power converters. <laughs> And Kai's just sitting there smirking on the bridge. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and Kai at this point thinks, oh, I'm good. Yeah. Right? I'm not going to get involved or anything. Right? right. This would be cool. This, this doesn't involve yeah. me. I'm just going to stand off to the side here. Heck, he got a chance to fire the rifles earlier. This right. is fun. You yeah. Know? <laughs> just wait, Kai. And I do want to point out the very 60s, 70s theme of children versus adults. Yeah. Which they're very much setting up here of you have generations not seeing each other. Right. All right. So that is the end of the first, the second episode, excuse me, of Mosul Gundam. Compared to the first episode, would you say this is as packed, less packed, or more packed? I would say this is um, less packed. So the first episode... Actually, you know, I feel like the whole point of the first episode now, mm. after you watched episode two, was to just gobsmack you. You know, mm. here are the things: people dying, 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 mm. things blowing up, mm. blah blah blah. Kick it in suit. Okay, we're we're figuring <laughs> things out, and 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 then here's some characters that we think will we no, they're dead. Okay, um, <laughs> you know, so there's yeah. this, this this the first episode episode is setting up for you to understand. Here's the quickness and brutality of war, yeah. and it's it sucks and it's just horrible. And here are the here are the characters that we're going to be caring about, and we're going to throw in this horrible situation because you can barely keep up as a viewer, yeah. you know, watching the first mm-hmm. episode. Second episode is where we start to get the structure, where we mm-hmm. start to see, 
okay, there isn't going to be the kindly uncle with the big nose who made the thing, <laughs> right, and entrusting his young nephew to pilot mm -hmm. the thing. Now, you have a captain that you're like, okay, there's got, nope, nope, he's got uh, things sticking out of his chest. <laughs> and then, you know, we have this coalescing of, of the team, so yeah. to speak. So you have Mariah on, on there, you you get a sense of yeah. who the, who the, the two yeah. guys on, up on the mm -hmm. upper tier yep. are. You get, you get you, you know Kai is going to figure into it somehow. <laughs> and you set up, uh, and you set up a, a very interesting contrast of a brother and sister, on both of them mm -hmm. on different sides of the war, and you're, the burning question is, how did one recognize the other and the other one didn't? Yeah. A, and B, how did that happen? Yeah, how did exactly. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're obviously that's going to be a story plot point that's going to move forward mm -hmm. but we're looking really at the coalescing uh, co uh the, the bringing together the band so yeah to speak, exactly mm -hmm. and most importantly we're bringing in bright mm -hmm. getting him away from being i i just came out of ocs <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing to okay this is what i got this is what i'm doing and and we're gonna we're gonna move forward with this yep so here we have this, the start of the team the as as mm -hmm. and then we set up the dynamics you know yep Amro and Bright don't like each other. Okay, we have to have that on our on, on one side, you know. But eventually they'll come together. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have an idea of who Sila is, and mm -hmm. um, and Frau almost takes a back seat to everything. She does. Yeah. You know, oh, um, honestly. So I think even though it sounds like it's it's yeah. not as packed, it, it it isn't. It's just that it's not. We're not being smacked repeatedly right. every five seconds. I I think to that point on Frau, I think this is kind of establishing her role, which yeah. is you know. Medic assistant kind right. of a thing where like that that's what she's gonna be doing here. Yeah, um, kind of in the background. Um, uh, you made an interesting uh, statement there about how all the different things that are being kind of, of established in this episode. And I think that that is really what, what what I'm seeing here is that first episode is throwing a lot of I mean things that are establishing characters and so forth. But this right. is getting you an idea of, okay, what are the relationships between these characters, right? Yeah. They're really thrown onto screen first in episode one. Episode two, you start to see, okay, here is Bright's relationship to Amaro. Here's Amaro's relationship to Ryu. You know, yeah. All these things are starting to, to make sense. But also, I wonder, so there, there's a, uh, a thing in the original Star Wars movie. Um, when they set dressed the corridor for the opening sequence where the uh, the Empire attacks the Rebels. Okay, yeah. They set dress that like everything else in Star Wars where it's all run down and messed up. And Lucas looked at that and said, no. Make that one hallway clean and bright. They're like, why? He says, because I want that hallway to look like 2001. Like the hallways in 2001 and I'm going to literally blow the doors off of 2001. <laughs> um, because his, his point was, not that this is going to be better than 2001, but that uh, sci-fi up to that point had been very intellectual and thoughtful and very clean lines and so forth. And he's like, no, I'm going to do a very messy, you know, very lived-in galaxy, lots of things right. going on, all that yeah. kind of stuff. And I want to kind of have that, that physical impact. I think having the captain get shot is that for Mobile right, Gundam because yeah. he is the kindly uncle who would have given Amaro the Gundam he would right. have been the, the, the older mentor and to have him take it out very quickly yeah. was that message that this is not that kind of a show um, yeah there's 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 a lot going on here um, it's also kind of interesting how this shows to your point the kind of the the limits and the slight breaking down of both Amaro and Char. Yeah. That we get to see them really struggle for the first time here. Uh, and again, think of older shows where you're not going to have that kind of freak out right. in people until episode 12. Uh, to show it this early means it's a war story. <laughs> yeah. This kind of thing actually happens. Uh, now, would you say this episode... sets up the future story effectively for like you know, the next few episodes are going to be kind of 
space stories, basically. We're going to be in space for a while. Uh, we're not going to really see Earth or colonies much for a while. Uh, and it does become kind of Battle of the Week for a bit. Yeah. Um, do you think this is kind of setting us up for success there, or does that not matter? I don't. I, I kind of almost don't think it matters. Mm. I, I think what, what we have here is that <clears throat> we've had these two episodes, mm. and they're saying we're heading to Luna 2, forward base mm -hmm. for the Federation. And I think that is meant to actually say to the viewer, you can take your breath now. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you, know, you can take your breath now. Because, mm -hmm. you know, at this point you're like, okay, we're going to go to a base. That means that for a little bit, maybe a couple minutes, <laughs> we're not going to have charges like, you know. And, and you know, so then I think what will happen is is that, or, or what mm. you know, I'm pretty sure happens is that then that's when we start getting removal of people, additions mm. of people, and then more a little bit more exposition. I think we're going to see a little mm. bit more of how the Federation is going to address this issue. Yeah. Uh, because you don't just go, oh, hi, I'm Amaro. I'm piling the Gundam now. <laughs> we're going to go into space and have adventures. You know, <laughs> no, because, you know, you're going to want to go to a forward base, some type of base where you can yeah. report back, where Bryce can report back. Mm -hmm. He's going to go, okay, Captain is really effed. Mm -hmm. um, we've got nobody on here. Uh, we got a kid piling this gun dumb. Yeah. Look, dude, I'm doing the best I can, but I'm freaking 19. <laughs> you know, you might want to get a superior commander mm -hmm. on this thing, and then you know, trying to trying to make the, the the case of going, okay, let's refit. Yeah, and then, but of course, we all know what happened. Right. right? <laughs> That's what I love about that, that episode. Is yeah. you like. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, but unfortunately, you know, <laughs> when you realize that this is how it's going to continue, mm -hmm. you're like, well, yeah, you don't have a choice, right? <laughs> you don't, you don't really, yeah, you know. And mm. what I also think is is, uh, I think also important to remember mm. is that, again, we're looking at this part of the war. You're right. You know, we're not looking at yeah. this part of the war. And I think mm -hmm. when we get to Luna 2, we start seeing this yeah, of, of, you're the, absolutely of the, right. the war. Yep. Where there's more. And I th I forget exactly when the Zobbies come back in. Mm -hmm. And when Char and and that side, the Xeon mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. also do the same thing. Where yeah. they're, they're just kind of like, oh, like, let's take a macro look of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And what's succeeding, what's not. Because, yeah. you know, Char's going to be reporting to Dozel yep. a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, and, all, and they're all just going to go... <laughs> Right. Oh, boy. Um, so, you know, this is kind of that, that little breath moment of, yeah. of let's give everybody the, the, the kind of big picture, I think. Yeah. Or, or start to. And, like, let's look kind of at that structure where I think episode two also serves as a bit of that bridge as well, where episode one is just the chaos of, of battle. Episode two is, okay, what can we actually do? Yeah. Like, what resources do we have? Who gets a pilot what? You know, what's going on? This is the first time we see Ryu in yeah. the core fi fighter, which becomes a, a standard thing moving forward. So you start to get a sense of what the crew is going to look like. In fact, I mean, by the by the end, those final shots, it's yeah. basically the, the main characters. There. Yeah, that, that's who you're going to deal with. But you know that Bryce, you know, we were talking, mm. we were talking about, you know, someone being trained versus a veteran versus mm -hmm. someone who just isn't anything, which is Amaro <laughs> <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Um, Bright's got the training to know enough mm. that he, he's, I, I, I think his mental state right about now is mm -hmm. just like, I just got to hold everything together yep. long enough mm -hmm. to get our butts to Luna 2 yep. where we're going to be relatively safe and I can pass this <laughs> god-awful mess <laughs> onto somebody else because mm -hmm. I am just not this is no mm -hmm. I cannot this I, I can I can get us there yeah I can get us there mm -hmm. then you contrast that with Char who's just like <clears throat> you know as we were saying you know mm -hmm. you know they're they're veterans so they and mm -hmm. they they're they've worked with this commander before so you know, he doesn't have to say that much. Yeah. And, you know, there's brevity in command, and mm -hmm. they understand, and there's loyalty in command, where mm -hmm. they're just, like, they have the trust of the officer to know what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Char has, has <clears throat> as we learned through this episode, Char is a capable warrior and, but mm -hmm. more importantly, a capable officer. Yeah. And, you know, he's able to, you know, do the thing. Yeah. And his, 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 whole, his whole thing at, towards the end of it is just, like, all right. I lost my elite commando unit that I relied he very heavily on. Mm -hmm. You know, you, his reaction to when Slender dies. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Is is 
<clears throat> you know, shocked that he's dead yeah. because he's in the Zaku that the Zaku's mm-hmm. taken out. And you can almost <clears throat> feel like he's just like, I trained this guy. Yeah, you know, or something. Mm-hmm. There, there's, yeah. there's something. There, there was a connection with Shar and his team. Yeah, that was important to Shar. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, because we see a, on a couple of occasions, Shar's just like, I'm, I'm, I'll make you pay for that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. he's angry about this. Yeah, right? because there, there were his. I don't know if you ever watched Sharp. It's a BBC show. Mm. Um, um, Sean Bean was in, mm. and there's a scene in, in the series where two of the soldiers stay behind to help a garrison, and the garrison yeah. gets wiped out. Mm. And he's really angry at the commander of, mm. of who, who cowardly ran away. Mm. And his thing was, these were my men, mm. my men. It wasn't like they were my friends or anything, but mm-hmm. they were my men. Mm-hmm. They were mine. Yeah. They, were, they were mine to order. They were mine. Mm-hmm. These were these were. He's getting choked up, and he's just like. You know these, they take care of me. I take care of them, yeah. and you almost get that from from Char mm-hmm. in, this, in this episode. Yeah, and and also you see a vast difference between the commander of the Masai mm. and and Bright. With yeah, this, you're right. That you know mm-hmm. they're all just trying. <laughs> I'm just trying to get that. Yeah, you know, trying to live for the next five minutes. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on the Masai, they're just like going, "Okay, this really sucks." Um, yeah, we got 18 cannon that we can fire. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and do the thing and. You know, <clears throat> you know, there was no sense of panic yeah, on, no. the, on the Zeon side. And this is where, you know, we kind of see things like yeah, we mirror right. that in re- real war, you know, mm-hmm. with, where the veterans, where the non-veterans go up against the veterans. Yeah. And it's messy. Mm-hmm. Very, very Absolutely. Messy. Uh, it also establishes how, uh, just what the status was of kind of white base in the V Project. Right. This idea that this is a... Uh, I mean, these are all clearly like soldiers who are who are picked for this, but it it feels more and more like this side project, right? Where this was not something that necessarily everyone was like, like everyone necessarily believed was the right the, the end of the war. Some folks <clears throat> did, obviously like they they say that in the show. Right. Like this was this was kind of the uh, the the savior of uh, of the federation, but. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It, it, well, you know, they, they put in a side, a neutral side into mm-hmm. the combat zone by yeah. putting by putting the research facility there. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like, to your point, I think, like, Char was just on patrol. It's not like they were looking for this. Yeah. You know? And I think they place more emphasis on white base itself in the very beginning mm, true. At, over the Gundam. Because yeah. got Because their, their idea of the... Because, you know, they... They gave us all these wonderful shots of, of White Base mm-hmm. as being the new battleship that will be able to take on yeah. you know the Xeon fleet. True. And you know, the, the Gundam is not an afterthought, mm-hmm. but a Gundam is an, an addendum to yeah. to White Base. And you wonder how much of that is and it's again interesting writing, where how much was the message within the Federation we're building this battleship. Because we don't want anyone to know about the Gundam, right? Right. Like we, you know, we know what it's like with military secrets. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you know, we have this amazing technology in the Gundam and gun tank and gun cannon, and so to kind of divert attention away, we say, "Oh, look at this Pegasus class cruiser. Yeah, it's it's yeah. going to be amazing." Yeah. Um, and when that's actually not the ace in the hole, uh, it turns out. But right. Yeah, it's it's interesting, and again, just like like we were saying, I I love that we. We establish that sense of uh, dread and that sense of danger by <laughs> killing off everybody competent. Yeah. You know, or at least sidelining them and making all of these characters in there. That just creates so much sense of anticipation of, okay, how are they going to deal with this? What are you yeah. going to do next? Yeah, just like Bright's reaction to, I've had two <laughs> combat su- uh, simulations, I'll have you know, so good sir. And Bright's just like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, better than nothing. Yep. I love that side look. I'm just like eh, over here, sitting in a pile. You should probably be in there. Right, exactly. Not that much better, but something. Good lord. Uh, and I think something they do establish later on is that the, or I forget if it's in the, the anime or, or elsewhere, is that the self-learning computer is also learning the pilot. Yeah. So as soon as Amaro has any training in there, it's like, well, we swap Rio into into there, and it has to completely relearn everything. Yeah. So we might as well just keep the same pilot in there. Yeah. It's gonna make, make it even more effective. 
Yeah. So it makes sense. Um, and, you know, Amaro is effective. Yeah. He, he, he does do the job. Actually, something I, I didn't point out at the time, note how when the two missiles are fired at white base, everyone's screaming to figure it out, and Amaro goes, I got it. Yeah. And he goes and he shoots two missiles right. out of the right. air. Yeah. <laughs> Just, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty darn impressive. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that is that is episode two. And how many more episodes of this show? <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, we're not doing the, the, not the doing all of them. It, but yes, but is forty five? Forty five? Forty five? Okay, so just. If you're if you're interested in, in watching this, and I hope you are, and I hope you do, mm-hmm. just you know, put those other anime on side, <laughs> on hold oh, for a little bit. That's a great point. That's that's worth yeah. bringing up here. There's enough going on in Gundam, and enough different plot threads weaving through that. Enough character development. It is very much a show that is worth focusing on for a while. Yeah. If you put it aside and try to come back, you're going to forget who's who and all the different relationships. Yeah. Because as you, as we've seen so far, they don't uh, keep repeating, as you know. As you know, you know. I, I, I didn't like you in the, the last episode. <laughs> right? There's none of that. So it is absolutely a show that rewards yeah. focus. Um, if it, <laughs> I mean, Tomino is kind of the one director who's like yeah, that. Yeah, where he's yeah. like, come on, guys, just pay attention. Pay attention, yeah. please. I'm making the thing. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. We will stop there.